Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and I am making some of these little pouches. I'm using just some junk mail envelopes. And what they're going to do is they're going to hold all of the little pieces that I usually send with my journals when I sell them. I put them in glossing bags right now, but I thought, why not make some of these since I've got so many of the junk mail envelopes. And then I can put the little pieces of ephemera and extra pages and things in this. Now, I don't have this tied. I would tie it, tie it with seam binding, probably. But it's just junk mail envelopes. And I've got three stacked. And you've got pocket here, pocket there, pocket there, 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 and there. And then you could also have pockets on the inside there if you wanted to. So there's plenty of places for pockets. And then you could put another little envelope down here at the bottom if you wanted and make even more pockets. This is the one that's going to go with my tea party journal. I just made it first just because I was thinking about it. But then I wanted to make one to go with this. This is the little uh, never ending journal that I made. And I'll do a quick flip through of that. Uh, let me grab some envelopes first. We want a big one, so there's one. Now I just grabbed some different sizes, different heights. Um, you can always cut them off to make them fit like you want them to. So I've just got this tied with some sorry silk and I've got some little charms hanging on the end of the sorry silk. And I'll show you real quick. Okay. And I didn't even hook the sorry silk on there because I figured if somebody wanted to tie it with something else and use the sorry silk elsewhere, they could. But on the front, I've just got a little pocket and then I've got a little vintage letter tucked down in there. And then this is a piece from e paper It's a crocheted butterfly and some little flowers. It's a little butterfly. And then, and I'll go through this quickly because I know a lot of you saw me make it, so just got pockets here, pockets there. This is a little pocket. I've got a tag stuck in there. More pockets. All of the tops are pockets. So all the way through the top is a pocket. Now I didn't put tags in every one of them, but I'm going to include some extra paper and things that tags could be made from. So we've got tags, tags, and then more tags, more pockets, and more pockets, tags, pockets and little tags and trinkets, and then a pocket that you can put something in, tags and trinkets in a pocket, and then the back, and then if you flip it this way, you've got the never ending journal. So we've got pockets, 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 and then some journaling space if you wanted to, pockets here, journaling, journaling, pockets with tags and then we're back to the front again so it's a little never-ending journal and I've got this little pack of goodies to go with it and then like I said I will include some extra paper in case they want to make tons and tons of tags to go in the top I've got some tags in the top but I don't have every one of them filled up I've got just a few in there you know like I've got that one in and I've got this little booklet tucked down in there. It's a little booklet. That's made with a junk mail envelope too. So that is our little never ending journal and that'll go up on the website hopefully today. I may get it up today. I don't know. It depends on how long I'll be doing the video. Now I wanted to let you guys know Monday Whit will be having his heart surgery on Monday so I may be well I will be gone Monday but um, you may not see a video from me for a couple of days and if you don't then um, it's just because I'm taking care of him but we're hoping if everything goes well we'll be back home Monday night sometime hopefully they may keep him over because he's not actually having the surgery until about 1 30 but they bumped it up they wasn't going to do it until August the 2nd but they called him yesterday and said they, they wanted to go ahead and bump it up. He's just having lots of issues. So, Okay, now even though this envelope is not as long as this one, that's okay. Don't worry about it. We're going to use it anyway. 
and then this one it's the same length of this one now I'm not going to use the little windows you can if you want to now this would be almost the same height as that one so I'm going to cut this off a little bit I'm not going to have it the same height I just want to cut it off make it a little shorter so I just wanted to let you guys know that in case you don't see me for a few days I don't know if I'll get any extra videos up or not been kind of tough for me to do videos lately all right so we've still got hmm I really want this one to be a little taller so let's see if we can find a different envelope that's a little taller that's a little bit taller okay I don't think I pulled out another one over here now I think I may cut a little bit of this top part off too simply because I don't want this to be quite so tall. So just take your envelopes and trim them down like you need them. Don't worry about keeping them all the same size or anything like that. Just trim them down like you need it. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and trim this little guy down a little bit more. And if you don't have junk mail envelopes, then you can always use your regular envelopes. I just happen to have an abundance of junk mail envelopes <laughs> so I like to use them up when I can all right so that should work now the person that sent me these they were opened at the top and that's okay because we wanted it open at the top anyway but I am going to glue these little extra flaps down and okay I'm going to trim that off a little bit just because it's cut open a little crooked so just trim it off a little to make it even there we go that will work so I guess you guys know by now I like playing around with the envelopes I like seeing all the different things that we can do with them Yeah, that'll work right there. And like I said, I'm not going to worry about these are a little bit shorter. But if that bothers you, you can always just cut it off at the end and make them the same if you want to. But I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, now I want to cover just the top of this. What I'm going to do is mark, because since I don't want to waste my paper, I'm just going to mark where that comes down to the next envelope and then I'm gonna just put a piece of paper here at the top let's see <clears throat> and I'm gonna use some of the paper that is from that same kit hopefully let's see I guess I'll use a piece of this I thought I had scrap Let's use this one. Um, all right, I'm going to tear this off at the top. I'm in a little bit of a mess here today. I've got everything pulled out, so you have to excuse me if I fiddle around a little bit. Just tearing that off get that little circle off of there because I want to use the top part okay and then we'll just mark there is a pin under all of my madness I'm going to come down to there so again we'll just tear it that doesn't look big enough at all I'm going to come down a little bit further Now somebody said they didn't know how in the world I tore with this Tim Holtz ruler. Well, it, all the paper don't tear exactly right, but you just have to hold it nice and firm and it'll tear. See, I don't mind the bottom part being off anyway because I'm not going to, you're not going to be seeing that bottom part. So 
So this is just one more thing that you can do with your junk mail envelopes. Or if you just have a stockpile of regular envelopes that you want to use up, you can do that as well. Okay, now let's dig under here and find our scissors. <coughs> Excuse me. Still struggling with my voice a little bit, so it may come and go. All right, that's that one. And then we'll put this one on right there. Okay. And then we'll see how high this one comes on that one so that we'll know. Okay, we just need to cover it that much. Now, I want to put a different color on this one because I don't want to have the same on each one. So I'm just going to tear a piece of this off and we'll use this. And yeah, I could drag out my trimmer, but there's no use in doing that. So how is everyone out there? You guys have stopped letting me know how you're doing. I've been reading your comments. Some of them I'm, I'm answering and some of them I'm having to skip right through because I've got so many and I'm so far behind. But I am reading them as they come through. So you guys let me know if y'all are doing okay. What's going on in your world? You know what's going on in my world. <laughs> Everybody knows what's going on in my world. <laughs> we did have the contractors come back finally. They came back yesterday and finished the bathroom. So now we just got the sheetrock guy that'll come over and... He'll do his little business, and then it, that'll be done. You know what? The more I look at that, the more I do want that to be even. So I'm going to cut this off. I know. That was... At first I said it didn't matter, and it doesn't matter, but now when I'm looking at it with the paper on it, I want it to be a little bit more even. So just trim it off. And then we'll just go in here and glue this back down. Yeah, they came and they finished the shower, so, well, basically finished. We've got to, they got to come back and put the door on it, but they won't be able to do that until the sheetrock guy gets his business done. And then, once they do that, then the painters will come back in and they'll, they'll paint everything again. Well, they've already painted, but they'll do the touch-up and like, paint the bathroom, that kind of thing. And yes, they will be covering up my floor. I had someone that said, I can't believe your painters are not covering up your floor. They are. They, when they painted the, in the, the first place, the first time they painted, they didn't have to cover it up because my flooring wasn't down. But now that my flooring's down, they'll cover up. They'll put uh, paper or something down to keep from making a mess. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and mark this up here so I can cut these little piece, places at the same, these little divots. So yes, don't worry, they will be covering up my floor. I would pitch a fit if they didn't. Won't be like this one guy that we had in one time. He came in to paint and we were, we was gone. We had, uh, <laughs> here again, we had gone on vacation. I think we should never go on vacation. And um, he was somebody that we knew, so we let him come in the house while we were gone and do the painting because we thought, well, we'll be out of the way so he can do the painting, and then when we get back, it'll all be done, and we won't have to worry about it. Well, well, well. Um, he did the painting all right, but he got paint everywhere. All He didn't cover my floors. He got paint all of my floors. He got paint all over. It was the biggest mess. And didn't clean it up. Didn't even bother to try to clean it up. So we were upset. I was more upset than my husband was. He was, he's actually kinfolk to my husband, so he wasn't so upset, but I was so mad I couldn't see straight. And I called him and I said, look, this is a mess. You gotta come clean these floors up. You should have covered everything. You've got paint all over my hardwood. 
I mean, he had paint all in my sink where he had, it had dripped down in my sink. He had paint everywhere. I said, no, mm -mm, this won't work. So he came back and cleaned it up, he and his daughter, but it made me so ill. I said, you're not getting the full amount of what I told you I would pay you just because you made such a mess. And we still, for the, for the longest, cleaned up paint spots. I had never seen anybody do like that before. And he claimed he was a professional painter. Well, I don't think that was right. Then we found out later that he actually had done the same things to other people along the way too, so. Now on the front one, you need to um, put paper all over it. So we can go ahead and glue these down. Now I stitch around mine, so I put a little bit of glue and Put them down and then I stitch, but if you don't want to stitch around them, then you just glue it down well. Okay. Now I'll tell you, when you fold these, you may get a little bit of overhang here when you fold it. If you do, just trim that off. I usually fold it and look at it, and if I've got some overhang there, then I just trim it. But don't, you know, don't let it upset you because when you fold, you've got a little bit more bulk in here and it's going to push this out. So you could trim it beforehand, but I just wait until I fold it. That way, you know exactly how much to trim off of it. There we go. And now we can put this one down. Here again, same thing. You'll have a little bit, unless you want to cut the middle part out. Now you can cut right down through there and cut the middle part out, and then you, you won't have to worry about that. But I didn't want to take that time to do, so just put mine down, and then I'll trim it off. If it needs it. And that's one reason that I like to stitch on these is because it, it helps hold all of that together as well. So, see, I just press it down. And then if I have any sticking out, I've got just a tiny bit right there, not much. Then I trim it off. That's a lot easier to me than having to cut each one of them down through there. There we go. All right, so we have that. Now, I go ahead and I put a little glue right here in the middle just to glue that down. And you can see my glue's coming up here. That's fine. I didn't put that much on it anyway because I am going to stitch. But just go back. If you if you uh, have this problem and you're not going to stitch, just go back and glue it down. It's not a biggie. It's just where we trimmed. Not going to worry about it, are we? Yeah, when you trim, you open that up a little bit, so that's all it is right there. Okay, there we go. So that is the inside. I think that's super cute. Now, if it bothers you that you've got these envelopes that, you know, something, the white shows on the inside, you can always cover the inside of them. That doesn't bother me at all. So I am not going to worry about that, but that's up to you. Now I'm going to use my bone folder and I'm going to press that little fold down just as much as I can. And then once again, I may have to do just a tiny bit of trimming out here. There we go. I mean, after all, you're working with junk mail envelopes, so, you know. All right, now what are we going to put on the front? I want something really cute on the front, I think. Okay, I think we'll just go with this. I don't, I'm not finding a, another scrap that's big enough, so we're just going to go with this one. Put this on the front, and I'm going to put it on and then trim it. You know that's my thing. Now, 
Now, I leave a little bit of this so that I can wrap it around to the back. So, I just put this down and leave a little bit hanging over, and I'll show you in just a second. Let's get that pressed down well. And then this folds around like that. That covers up that where you folded your envelope there. And then... See, that'll fold around like that. Let's see, let's go ahead and trim this bottom first before we fold that around. Got a little bit hanging over. I like that. Now, I'm going to cut my little divot out again. There we go. And then we'll cover the back. And I cover the back because this is going to go with our little journal so we want the back covered we're not going to glue this down now you could use these in your journal if you wanted to but I'm using pattern paper scrapbook paper so it's going to be kind of thick for me to use in a journal. I thought about putting that on there, but that's not going to be big enough, so I guess I'll go with this. Okay. And now we'll trim this one off. Okay. Now let's cut the divot out of this one and we can do some inking and this will be finished. So there is that. Now I just go around and check and make sure I've got everything glued down well. Looks like I do. This is a little bit sticking over right there. And then I would take this and stitch, but I'm going to go ahead and ink it right now. I'm just going to ink it in some vintage photo, but the other one, let's see, the other one I inked in Mermaid Lagoon. It was blue. I thought that was pretty. Went with that well. And your inking will cover up any of your white edges where the envelope may be showing through, like there. Just give that a good inking, and it'll cover that envelope up. Now, if you'd wanted all of these inked, you needed to ink them before. I didn't, but if you want them inked, you can go back and put a little piece of paper in there and then ink those up. I'm just gonna do them like that. That'll be fine. This paper is, there we go. Put a little bit of ink on the back. All right, so there is our little, I guess we can call this, uh, journal buddy <laughs> I don't know uh, let's see let me find now all of this that I have oops. okay all of this that I have in here I can take it out of the, the little bag and just slide it down in these pockets and that's what I'll do and then put some seam binding around it or sorry silk and send it along with my journal so that's what I will do with this. Let me go ahead and let's go ahead and put these little pieces in here. Now, some of these are tiny, tiny pieces, so I may have to add an, an additional little tiny pocket at the bottom. And if I do, that's okay. I just don't want them to slide down in there to where the person can't find them. See that? It's going to slide way down in there. A lot of these are small. So I may put some of these back in the little glossine bag. Because see, these are tiny, tiny. And then I can add more things in there. So let's do that. 
I don't want them to get lost down in there. I always try to send along lots of embellishments and then they can do more embellishing if they want or they can use the embellishments for something else. Okay. We will stick that down in there. Move this little guy over here. Stick that in there. There we go. And then I can put some other little tags and things in here or little pieces for tags. If they want to cut tags. And then I can close it up with the seam binding and that will be it. That'll go right along with the journal. So I'm just going to go through my extra paper that I have here. And we'll just pull out some things that they can use for tags and embellishments. And we'll put those in there. And it is okay if some of them stick out. I'm not going to worry about that part. And I'm not going to trim them down. They can trim them down like they want. They might want to trim them a different way than what I would. So we'll let that, that all go. Let's see. And there's a little pocket we can stick in there that would go with it. So this is getting chunky. Another little piece. And then a big piece that can be for a big tag. Let's put that up here. There we go. And there's another one that can be for a large tag. Put that on this side. So just the extra pieces we're going to send along and then they can do with what they would like. Took some of that music page in there, some little words in there, and then we'll tie this up with a piece of seam binding. So let me grab that. Okay, I've just decided to tie it with a piece of sorry silk, like I tied the little journal with. But there we go. And that will go along with the little journal. Let me grab it. Now this paper and this paper is not the same, but some of the paper in here is. And this paper is in here somewhere, I know, because I put it in there. <laughs> but that's okay, it's floral, so it doesn't have to be the same thing. They can use this for something else if they want. But that will go along with our little journal. All right, guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. Give this a try. They're quick and easy, and you can use up some of those scraps that you had laying around when you got through making your journal. Let's go ahead and put a little uh, tag on here, a little label on here. I'll get it out in a minute. Uh, let's see. Let's put this one. Maximum 3,600 RPMs. Okay. There we go. And we'll probably include some little labels in here too. I usually do. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. Give this a try. These are quick and easy and they're a lot of fun. You can use up junk mail envelopes and you can use up your scraps. All right. We will talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.